Let's talk about refinance. Uh, not for everybody. It certainly is not for everyone. You know, uh, you know. Uh, I think a lot of households, their goal is to become mortgage free. Um, and you know, sometimes doing a refinance, Todd, and pulling some equity out of the home yep. can actually help you get mortgage free faster. How so? Imagine. How so? I actually just talked to somebody today. Um, they had $100,000 worth of unsecured debt, yes. which they are currently paying $3,000 a month on outside of their mortgage. Mm-hmm. Home worth $500,000, mortgage owed less than $300,000, bada boom, bada bing, combine it all together into a new mortgage uh, for $400,000, and guess what? We can cut their amortization in less than half. Wow. So when you talk about $100,000 in insecure debt, are you t- are you talking like lines, of credit, lines of credit, credit card, What loans. type of interest rates would you be talking about? Um, pretty high. Yeah. You know, I would 20%, say some like of that. it would be 20%. Yeah. Some of it is, you know, around like seven, eight, nine percent depends on kind of like what credit facility it is. Right. And, you know, on a really good, uh, you know, unsecured line of credit, it's usually even like around 5% Todd. So we're talking anywhere from like five to 20% usually. Mm-hmm. And these guys were hammering it down. Yeah. You know, they were paying it, yeah. you know, lots of good household income, no problem with affording it. Mm-hmm. But it would take them a real, real yeah. long time. Yeah. Forever. Like we're talking, I don't know about forever, but we're talking like more than five years probably yeah. to get this, you know, unsecured debt paid off. And they were in the middle of their term. But guess what? They were in a variable rate mortgage. Yeah. And it was only going to cost them something like $1,500 to get out of their term early. They're paying that much a month in interest. Wow. So pretty shocking when you look at it. And sometimes you really don't think about, you know, the mechanics of like, what would a refinance look like? And some people think that when you refinance, you're like, well, I'm going to start my mortgage o- over and I pay all the interest in the beginning. It really depends on what the amortization is. Mm-hmm. And not everyone who does a refi goes to 30 years or goes to 25 years. We can play with the amortization because essentially you're a free agent when we're doing a refi and we can make sure the amortization meets your needs and the term meets your needs. And the mortgage amount meets, meets your needs. Now, don't get me wrong, Todd. Mm-hmm. Not everybody's doing a refi to pay unsecured debt. Don't that that is not really what I want to, uh, you know, say that that what this that's what we do all the time. It's not. People are doing refis right now to improve their properties. People are doing refis and maybe putting a collateral charge type product on it, maybe with like a home equity line of credit, maybe different mortgage components, and they're using some of those credit facilities for investment purposes. Mm -hmm. All right, that has to be a pretty savvy investor, but you know, that is an option. And thirdly, people are doing refinances to pay out other debts. And you know, everybody's situation is a little bit different. I can tell you in our office, uh, we reached out to a bunch of our clients over the last month or two and, and basically talked to them, you know, you bought a home prior to January, 2020 or March, 2020. You have a lot of equity in your property. You are in a variable rate mortgage product. Maybe looking at a midterm refinance makes sense. Now, obviously Todd, it doesn't make sense for everyone. You know, maybe if you've had a change of your employment and maybe we, if we can't confirm your income, that might be a problem. Mm-hmm. Maybe if there's been maybe some credit challenges, maybe that doesn't make sense. But for a lot of people it does. And you know, I, 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 I almost regret, not even regret, that's the wrong word. But, you know, I was very proactive before, you know, before the pandemic, you know, we did a lot of annual reviews, a lot of check-ins with our client and our team and our team still does that. But I didn't have the time to, you know, look at a client's file and say, okay, let's look at this. Yeah. Our refi does make sense because guess what? We were busy with purchases. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, we didn't have this nice to do. Let's look and see, does a midterm refinance work for you? But now where we've had a chance to pause and breathe and kind of reevaluate, um, you know, we're in a situation that, you know, do, we're do, certainly doing a lot of refis and the amount of transactions we're doing, um, you know, it's about the same as previous years, but more and more transactions are refis and less maybe our purchases. And I think that's just a, you know, uh, a symptom of the amount of inventory that's in the market. Mm-hmm. So when somebody refinances and they want to put their money into the house, I know this firsthand because I just I just went through this. Mm-hmm. 
but it's it's not as though you're paying a contractor on their behalf or anything like that. It's not like a new purchase where you get a you simply the, the deal closes the money you goes get in your money bank into your bank account and you could do anything you want with that money not to suggest that people should but you need some discipline is what i'm getting i, at I would 100 percent say you have discipline if we do a refi and we're paying out other debts yeah. typically the payment goes directly to that creditor right all right yeah. so that's normally the way it works yeah. when we're doing a refi and we're pulling equity out for an, you know improvement you know we're doing renovations mm -hmm. the money then goes to your bank account yeah. And yeah, you do need to make some good decisions. You don't want to go on vacation or maybe buy a new car with it. Yeah. You know, I'm not really a big believer on doing a refi and paying out cars. Because guess what? That asset's depreciating and you don't want to pay that car over 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, and you're always going to need a new car. But, you know, if there's other debts that might have I mean, maybe initially been maybe some short term debts, but then they've turned into some long term borrowing. It is a lot cheaper to do a refi at a variable rate, let's say 2%. It's a lot cheaper to do a refi at 2% than it is having money sitting on a credit card at 20%. Yeah. And it's not that we are creating any new debt. I think it's just putting the debt in the best financial vehicle to help you pay it off faster. And I often ask people, I'm like, okay, how much are you paying on these accounts? Like, I know what comes up on the credit bureau, but like, how much are you paying? And they're like, oh, I'm putting 400 on this one. And I'm putting 500 on that one. And that one's $800 a month. And I add it up and I'm like, wow, if you even uh, increase your mortgage payment by $1,000 a month compared to what you were paying before, you're going to be further ahead. And we're able to put a couple thousand dollars a month back into that household, you know, every month. It's a no brainer. When it comes to a, appraisal, is that mm -hmm. usually what might, might happen? Not always. It depends. How, how do you know whether yeah, some, when does an appraisal get triggered? So some at. lenders have a low ratio valuation system. Yeah. Um, some lenders use the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation just to access their data. So refis are not insured. They're not insurable. They're conventional, like a standard mortgage. Um, but some uh, lenders have access to the low ratio valuation system, so they can see, you know, with the postal code, with the square footage, is the value supported. Uh, other lenders have access to First Canadian Title, which is uh, uh, an insurance company, and they have a valuation service. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, other lenders use a third-party appraisal management company, and they also do their own auto evaluation. Right. And if the value is supported by kind of any of those methods, mm -hmm. then you don't need an appraisal. There is a lot of sales data right now, right. which is positive. Yeah. But I think if we're doing a refi, and I always ask the customer, like, what do you think this house is going to sell for? You know your house better than I do. I've never been to it. Uh, you know what comparable homes in your neighborhood are selling for, or at least, you know, you're keeping an eye. You have kind of have a, a reasonable idea on like what, 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 what it's worth. And I take the lead from the customer. It, it's sometimes a Goldilocks though. It can't be too high and it can't be too low. Mm -hmm. You know, it can't be too hard. It can't be too soft. Um, and like, that's one thing that we certainly do take into consideration. And not every property can go through this low ratio valuation system. You know, if it's a multi-unit, maybe that won't work. If it's in a more rural area, like the postal code is B0, maybe that won't work. Um, but we certainly try these low ratio valuation systems first. Mm -hmm. And if the value is supported, cool. That saves you some money, saves me some time. Everybody's happy. But not in every scenario is the value supported. And if it's not, then we do need a full appraisal. And typically it's at the client's cost. Some lenders do have promotions on right now where they'll reimburse the borrower for the cost of the appraisal. I mean, not every lender, but some do. Um, and we can refinance up to 80% of that market value. And that market value is determined by the appraisal if it's required. So it's a max of 80% of what the appraisal value is. Do you often recommend going to the uh, straight to the 80% or sometimes do you say... Look, you don't need the 80% or what type of it really guidance is yeah, offered? Yeah, it really depends. Scenario. Like, I think one consideration, obviously, is income. People yeah. can only swing so much. Yeah. And we would never want to put somebody in a worse position. And, you know, I think that's one thing that we really kind of look at. You know, we evaluate how much can these people afford? Typically, the level of affordability is somewhere between four and four and a half times the household annual income. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they might have a home 
and they might own it and have lots of equity in the property, but they can only maybe secure a mortgage at 65% or 50%, uh, depending on what their income is. So I think that's a consideration. And in some cases on a refinance, uh, we'll put a collateral charge type product on the home. So maybe it has multiple different components under that global limit. Uh, so for example, let's say you own a $500,000 home and we're doing a global limit up to 400,000, but you you say, Hey, Clinton, we really only want a mortgage for 200, right? We would still likely do this type of product, but maybe if you can qualify and you can afford it, we may open up a home equity line of credit up to that 80% mark just so you have the available credit. So, you know, if you do need to dip into that for renovations, or if you do need, want to dip into that for investments or something like that, mm-hmm. it's set up. It's so much easier to get access to credit when you don't need it, but when you do need it, that sometimes can be a challenge. The average refinance file, typically from the day we opened it to funding, Mm -hmm. 60 days is the normal. So, you know, if you need to buy something or if you're like, hey, I'm buying a new car, but it's a used car, chances are it might be easier and cheaper to finance that on your home equity line of credit. Right Right now, HELOCs, most lenders, prime plus 50 basis points. You're looking Mm -hmm. at a rate of... 3.2%. 3.2%. And that certainly can be a lot lower than a loan on a used car. So somebody's looking at refinance. What are some preliminary things they can get already lined up before they even come and see you? You know, income documents are super, super yeah. important. Yeah. You know, if you're on a salary, that's easy. If you have a variable income, typically we'll get your pay stub into two years of your T4. Mm-hmm. We would want your 2021 annual mortgage statement and a recent property tax bill. So obviously income, property is really important we would want to get a list of your assets. And then through our underwriting platform, we would pull your credit, obviously with your consent, Mm -hmm. we would ingest all the liabilities into the file and then obviously make the plan that works best for you. And obviously we make recommendations. We have another segment to go. What do you want to talk about? Any idea or am I putting you on the spot? Well, I mean, you're always putting me on the spot, but I'm sure uh, we'll be talking a little bit more maybe about first time home buyers. And if you want to ask me some more questions about refinance, you know, I can talk about it all day long. All right, we'll figure it out. We'll be right back.